play Michael Gundy. Like, as coordinated as he is in the NFL, yeah. my gut says the basketball version him probably can't dribble. They're going to be just like pushing people. And like, Michael, this is not, that is not Foul. fucking Jalen Hurts. Stop trying to talk about it. This is, Foul. you're not. <laughs> yeah, you right. Just file. Like, that is not Daniel Jones. Stop running after that, man. He's oh, gonna, Michael, you have to dribble be? the ball. You don't just run with the ball. It's dribble. This is a football. Don't just take He's going to do it. It's all good. Traveling don't exist. Yes. Yeah, buddy. Episode 98. Of Cinco Squad. Yes, that's right. Episode 98. I was wrong last week. Mike was right, as usual. What's going yeah. on, everyone? This is yeah. this is hey, Cinco he's Squad. Right Jamie. He's already in a chat to stop the squad. <laughs> no, he's yeah. the real white right person. <laughs> well, this is some this is Cinco Squad, episode 98. My name is Jonathan Sawyer. With me are my brothers, Trey Day, Mike A, and Grandpa J. Fellas, football is no more. What the hell? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Watch the foosball. I mean, the <laughs> basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but as as we bring here on a Thursday a- afternoon, um, our condolences go out to everyone in Kansas City. It is a uh, horrible, horrible thing that happened. A uh, shooting happened during the parade, during a celebratory uh, event for the Kansas City Chiefs. There was a shooting. One person unfortunately passed away and 22 injured and it's just unfortunate that we can't even have these camaraderie events anymore without something like this happen happening and everyone at Cinco Squad here wants to wish you know everyone and their families a prayer our thoughts and prayers to them this is getting absolutely ridiculous and this needs to be stopped and and and, and done with I mean this is getting absolutely ridiculous where you can't even go to a celebratory parade anymore so our thoughts are with you guys and um you know, we're, we're we're hoping everyone can move past this and with happy thoughts and, and whatnot. So moving on to our episode 98, we have a great episode of topics. We have NBA, NHL, uh, college basketball, a little bit of NFL. But before we get into that, let's throw it over to Mikey Mike. Mike, what's on your mind today? Well, I decided that for my, to in Mike's mind, I'm going to make sure that we cover the gambit of sports. Uh, for go. those of you that aren't aware out there, sports fans, baseball's back too. Spring training is here. Pitchers and catchers have reported. I'm very excited about it. Uh, John, I know, is very excited about it. Trey and Jamie are excited about it because baseball's back. Uh, a little bit of the rotation might be on its way as well. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe. But I thought I'd come to you guys this week with a very crazy story that I read about when it comes to the history of spring training, this happened during spring training. So on March 4th, 1973, during spring training, it was during Yankee spring training specifically, a trade from the previous summer was announced. (laughs) Probably saying what they announced a trade from the summer during spring training. That's right. It involved two pitchers, both of whom were already at Yankees camp at the time. Because it turns out that in August of the previous season, 1972, Fritz Peterson and Mike Kekich had swapped wives and lives. What? <laughs> what? Exactly my, the reaction I was hoping for, ladies and gentlemen. What? Following a party over the summer, Peterson moved in with Kekich's wife and daughters, and Kekich moved in with Peterson's wife and two sons. Peterson and Kekich, Kekich's wife got married in 1974. However, by the time they announced the swap in March, Kekich and Peterson's wife had already split up. Wow. <laughs> and that, That's ladies and gentlemen, moment. is what's on Mike's mind. <laughs> That's friggin' nuts. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. I know. Yes. Talk about hitting them with a splitter. Yeah, really. yeah exactly. This is, yeah. <laughs> that's a splitter of a different kind. Yeah. Hell of a curveball there. Yeah. Oh, that, that threw, I think it threw everybody for... I think, if I recall correctly, when I was reading it, the GM, Lee McPhail, at the time, was like, yeah, we may have to cancel the family day. Like, family day. I know, it's crazy. They may have to change up family day. Yeah, exactly. Now, whose family here? Is it <laughs> technically all of you, or... None of you? Yeah, so so yeah, so that's uh that was uh what was on my mind this week. It was 
pretty nuts. How the hell did you think the kids are going to react to that? What the hell is wrong with some people, man? It's I don't nuts. Know. I don't get it. So where they get that white slap, uh, Dale Curry and his wife, but that guy who played the Patriots and his wife, yep. they did a wife swap. They did? Yeah. They were like buddies. Yeah, I remember that a few years ago. Yeah, that happens though sometimes. Right? You hang out around people long enough and then all of a sudden they they make you feel better about yourself because they have a stale taste for each other. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, this person's kind of who I like now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus it was the 70s. Everybody was swinging. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody you're, was you guys swinging. You got to make this normal. This ain't fucking normal. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> no, no. Under no this circumstances is normal. normal. Like, what the hell? Yeah. You guys are like, oh, yeah. yeah. I remember like, uh, yeah, every 30 years we hear of a situation. <laughs> ESPN, I think you're forgetting something. I understand this weekend is NBA All-Star Weekend. I understand the Super Bowl just happened. But you do know that spring training just started, right? I'm not asking you to be the main coverage for it. I'm not asking you to be talking about it all day like you do for NFL, NBA, wall-to-wall coverage for some reason. I'm just saying I didn't see it at all today. There wasn't even really even a mention that it was starting. I know they just reported, and it was a re- it's recently it's just pitchers and catchers, but still... Can we get at least a little bit of coverage of spring training, a little bit of pitchers and catchers reporting? I mean, I think people understand that this weekend is NBA All-Star Weekend when you reach hour eight of talking about it. I think people know that the Super Bowl happened because it happened days ago. We know what the result was. So like I said, I'm not asking you to talk about nothing but baseball, but can we get a little love for a sport that you literally have the Sunday night exclusive on and you have a show called baseball tonight, please. (laughs) Yes, everybody. Welcome to the segment where you guys get to hear how you're going to make yourself some moolah this weekend. It is my locks of the week. And boy, boy, do I feel like an idiot for not taking my absolute lock of the week last week. Trey, thank you for taking it. He won $36 on his $1 bet. That was a non QB to throw a touchdown. And this idiot right here decided I'm not going to take my own advice and left hundreds of dollars on the table because, yes, I am that dumb to not take my advice when I knew it was going to happen. Anyway, so I tell you, you got to roll with me. I got these locks on. And McCaffrey scored the first touchdown of the game. So at least we want a little bit on that one. This Mm -hmm. week, we go back to the unpredictability of college basketball because who the hell knows what's going on? Seems like every team – in fact, I saw a stat saying that 33 – and 34 is the current record of top 10 teams on the road right now. That is a losing record. So you really don't know what's going on. So I decided to play it safe, maybe. I kind of like this Marquette going to UConn right now to reverse that trend. Yeah. I think I think Marquette's looking great right now. UConn hasn't had a true test in a long time. I love the points. I think that it's, it's at five and a half right now, and that might change. But I love Marquette at UConn to at least cover this weekend. And then Vandy with the upset. I mean, AM takes out Tennessee and then AM rolls up in Vanderbilt in the wackiest court in America. And Vandy takes them out on a circus shot to win the game. Well, here's what's not going to happen Vandy is 0 and 6. Yep, 0 and 6 on the road this year. And they're walking into a very hostile environment against their state rivals, Tennessee. And Tennessee will blow them out of the building. So I love Tennessee to cover. And I love Marquette to cover this week. And that, ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, who knows what's really going on in college basketball? Well, this guy does this week. Marquette to cover. Tennessee to blow out Vanderbilt and cover. That, ladies and gentlemen, your locks of the week. Super Bowl 58 was one for the ages. You had overtime win by the Kansas City Chiefs. You had Patrick Mahomes with a ball with three seconds left in the overtime to win the game, and it happens, and back-to-back champions they are. But I keep hearing around everywhere that they – the biggest storyline was Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid's situation where Travis Kelsey got heated in the moment and ended up almost pushing over Andy Reid, yelling in his face. Now, do I condone this? Absolutely not. Especially as the captain of the team, you need to represent the team and yourself better in that aspect. It was totally uncalled for. And he's owned that to this day. He's even said that himself. But if you are a competitor, if you are even a competitor at all, You understand that you get heated in the moment, and it happens. This stuff happens. Is it right? No. Will it happen? Yes, because this is the truth of the game. 
This is the human human element of the game that your emotions are going so fast. And for me to sit here and say Travis Kelsey, he's a bad role model for kids. He's a bad person. He should be benched. He should be kicked off the team. It's absolutely ridiculous because I'm sure if you look in the mirror, you've done this once or twice or more than that in your career of playing sports, whether it was high school, travel league, college, whatever it may be, you probably have done that. So cut the guy some break. And I love the way Jason Kelsey puts it. As he doesn't condone his brother's actions, he says, you don't do this unless you have the utmost love and care for that person and and have the same similar mindset that that person has. And that's the truth. Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey have so much love and care for each other that at the end of the game was immediately squashed by them giving a hug and raising up that Lombardi trophy. And give Travis Kelsey a break. He made a mistake, he owned it, and it's it's gone. So let's move on from this. Yes, gentlemen, the NFL season is over, and what a great Super Bowl it was. And, you know, two years in a row we get two great games. Unfortunately, my birds didn't win the one last year. But this brings up a good question. You know, we're already going to talk about next season because we can't wait till we get to next season for NFL. Would you take the Niners or Chiefs or the field? To win it all. Try it. Patrick, Michael, Michael. <laughs> Jordan, Mahomes is in this equation. you damn right I'm taking And I still get the 49ers, too, who are going to bring back most of their people. you damn right I'm taking those, two. I know we got a shot at 30. I know I'm a Steelers fan. We ain't going to Super Bowl next year. I got to be realistic with this. So if not, where am I going to push my chips in? I got Patrick, Michael, Jordan, Mahomes out here. And honestly, why I told y'all before, I told everybody, you do not bet against that man. Nope. That's a bad man, as you know, you saw, always hear in NBA talk. And then on top of that, to be honest, the Niners are still going to be hungry. I still think they're going to be a force to wreck with. And in that game, Purdy honestly played good. They didn't lose that game because of Purdy. So I think that's only going to build his confidence in the next year because we won't be able to go out next year and say, well, Danny would have won a championship world with Purdy. That was always the narrative. Is, well, Purdy hold him back. Purdy didn't hold him back from a championship. So the confidence is going to be there. The Chiefs are going to have their confidence. And truthfully, some of those young dudes on the Chiefs are only going to get better. I mean, look at McDuffie and these guys are young. Like, imagine now with a ring and extra confidence, somebody like him or Pacheco, yep. or they get out to get the draft for a couple guys. Maybe they can go get an actual receiver in free agency. Shit. Yeah. Kansas City, this might be a three-peat. But if not, you still have the 49ers in that equation. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this it's the same way. Like, you look at the Chiefs, and they're so young, and they don't have to really pay anyone, right? Chris Jones may be the only one that they're paying this year, maybe a couple other guys, but they're not paying anyone. A lot of guys still have rookie contracts. Trav and Pat are locked in for another few years. Like, it's, it's pretty much set for it. And what is the biggest thing that we've been saying over the season? It is very difficult to continue to do 19 game seasons every single year, or I guess you should say 20 game seasons for them this year. It's very difficult to do that, but they're doing it and they're making it look easy. I agree with Trey. You can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I'm hoping my birds bring back some guys and has a shot, but it's going to be tough to pick against the, the Niners and the chiefs because they're going to, the Niners got this close, this close. Maybe next year they'll remember what or go through some motions of what the overtime rules in the NFL are in the playoffs. So, but I, there was one one thing that you mentioned was Purdy, and I read a tweet that I commented back on today or yesterday about you know Purdy and Hurts, two overrated quarterbacks that play you know I guess lost in the team in the game. Like you obviously didn't watch either of the game because Hurts set a record in the Super Bowl for quarterback, I think for rushing yards and, and throwing yards. And then Purdy played a solid game, didn't throw a pick, almost did in overtime, didn't throw a pick, didn't do – he managed the game well. He did the game – he did what he had to do to get his guys the ball, and he managed the game well. And there's nothing wrong with that. He played a great game. He's going to only have confidence. Mikey Mike? Yeah, so it, it is – it's tough to bet against the Chiefs and the Niners – And I've always said, until the Chiefs give me a reason to doubt them, I'm not going to doubt them. And I don't doubt that that they can do it. But I'm going to play it a little more conservatively. I'm going to take the law of averages. I got 30 teams versus two of them. Give me the field 
at this point. I think there's teams that are continuing to develop. The one that comes to mind the most is the Lions, and the fact that I think the Lions are only going to get better from where they were, and hopefully they too have learned a lesson about sometimes it's okay to not be aggressive. But like we said, it's it takes a lot out of a team, especially in the game of football, to play so many deep runs. So eventually, I mean, I know Jay last week talked about how he thought this was his la- their last chance to win before they went on that Patriots hiatus before winning more championships. That may be the case. They may be, or at least it may be a year, it may be a year on, year off type of thing, like the San Francisco Giants of the MLB. So at this point, give me the field, but in the back of my head, I know Mahomes and the Chiefs are at least going to make it close. I think they should do a 30-team Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Mike, I'm so, totally shocked. Oh, my one God. Player from, hold on. Awesome. One, one player from each team, Royal Rumble style. Everyone comes down into the field. That's and the last wins. one, last man standing wins. <laughs> uh, Jay, Jay, what do you think on there, Mr. I, uh, I, I'm just floored changer? right now. That I'm floored right now. This guy down here talking about taking the field when until you give me a reason mm-hmm. – to doubt Patrick Mahomes, and here you are right now taking the field. I'm absolutely shocked. I have Me become too. a believer. You missed. You, become missed a believer. you misspoke his name. Oh, he's a believer. Hey, hey, this is a breaking news. He I have become a believer, and here's why I've become a believer. It's because because <laughs> these guys ain't the Dallas Cowboys. They ain't the Dallas Cowboys that are gonna go crashing out of the playoffs with a chance to three peat. And San Francisco, unfortunately, are the Buffalo Bills, where all they're going to do is lose Super Bowls. So I ain't taking the field. I'm taking Patrick Michael Jordan Mahomes, like our boy Trey Day says here, to do something that's never been done in the history of the NFL, because if there's one quarterback that can do it, it's who people are already crowning to be the greatest quarterback of all time, even though he's still not even halfway there to Tom Brady. But I don't even measure it by rings. I measure it as a testament to win. And what this defense did, holding three of the top five offenses to under 15 points when they averaged four touchdowns a game, and San Fran barely got to 20 on them, and that only really happened because the game went to overtime, that means that these guys know how to win games dirty. Before, it was the sexy Chiefs. Now it's completely different. So I'm a believer. Give me the Chiefs. Fuck the 49ers. I think I might fall in love with the idea of a three-peat next year. You might even see me doing... A little something on the show with some gear on my head that doesn't look like the team I support. And no, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. I'm just paying my respect to what might be the first three-peat we ever witnessed in the history of the NFL, at least the Super Bowl era. Jay, Jay, there's a there's a wagon out here for you. Man, I ain't jumping on no wagon, bro. John, hey, Chris Berman's on it. He's John, is there a mar- would there happen to be a marching band on that wagon? Is that a yeah, band wagon? No one circles away like Jamie and the Chiefs. I, I told you, look, I, I, I'll, be, I'll be chatting for the Bucks. If the Bucks play the 49ers, I already said fuck the 49ers. But if the Chiefs <laughs> make it to the Super Bowl, I'm cheering for the Chiefs because the Bucks ain't getting there. So You don't trust the Baker oh. man anymore? I'm, I'm I love floored. the Baker man. I'm I love the Baker man. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think they can make a deep run in the playoffs. <laughs> No, there we fans. go. <laughs> I think the Giants can in Madden. In the what? Oh, what is that? So there's a fun stat that I just sent to I sent to Mike. Apparently, Ben McAdoo, the head oh, coach yeah. of, the, of the New York Football Giants, wanted to dra- trade up to go get Patrick Mahomes in that draft. Wow! And apparently, that front office said, "No, we don't think he's going to be a long-term quarterback." <laughs> Wait, was he? I, where, where, what position was he in at that time when they drafted him? What organization was he with? He was with the Chiefs. McAdoo. Yeah. McAdoo oh, no. was the Giants' head coach. Head coach. When they drafted Mahomes. 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 When, okay. Mahomes. Yeah. See, you see, Mahomes, Jamie. Before... I think went like sixteenth, tenth, seventeenth, tenth, tenth. So they could have realistically straight it up. I just, you know, for for all of what you guys said, I mean, I'm just looking at. You know, this guy just continues to get better, and he's 28. He's With no 20 number one. With eight. no number one. His number one is Travis Kelsey, but he has – I mean, he's done it with no – like, literally yeah. no one around him right now. He's done it with three tight ends. That entire game, they ran a three tight end set. Yep. Like, we can't – I mean, I can't doubt him right now. I mean, ever. I mean, you just I'm can't. just glad everybody else is finally seeing what I've been telling people. Literally just walked in the door. 
It was obvious. He's the man. I don't see why people wouldn't doubt. It was John, obvious. Go ahead. It, it you have one last time to sing it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. One more time. It's my home. <laughs> one it's more time, buddy. You know. Take us away. Oh. Take us away. Serenade it's us one more time. Oh, oh, oh. It's my home. <laughs> we know. Oh. <laughs> yep. All right, Never fellas. believe it's not so. NBA, we're going back to the regular format of All-Star Weekend, and that's perfectly fine. But there's something else I want y'all to bring back as well. Uh, on Saturday night, I used to love the NBA Shooting Stars event. I know some of y'all may not remember what that was, but what that event was you would have different points where three teams of three, they would go around, they would have to shoot and make a shot, and they would go to the next shot. And then at the end, somebody would have to make a half-court shot. I always thought it was a dope event because you would have maybe an NBA legend, a current NBA player, and eventually integrated in a WNBA player. So you had just a multitude of stars and levels and different people out there. So I always thought that was a dope event. Uh, they did the event from 2004 to 2015, and then they just stopped. They never really gave a reason why, but honestly, I thought it was fun. And with today's NBA, it's so much about shooting. Couldn't you imagine if you were doing something where Steph Curry's doing his Rising Stars uh, challenge, and he has like a Golden State legend, and he has maybe, let's say, next year, Caitlin Clark or somebody's shooting with him, or just whoever. It, it would have been a fun event, and we have basically missed that event for a decade, and I think that's an event they should bring back because – it's just fun. I mean, it's you know, it's better than that horse team they tried before. As M NFL ends, we get another exciting weekend in Indianapolis. It is the NBA All Star Weekend. Oh, I would think it's a, this, this is like the Super Bowl for NBA because they, you know, the NBA Finals goes back home and home uh, to opposing teams. This is like the Super Bowl, and I heard Adam Silver say they treat it like it's their Super Bowl weekend. So <laughs> they try to make it as fun as it is. I think Trey's been to one. Um, Look at that I used to go out yeah, I've been a few. This is like, if I wasn't out of town for work, I would have went to this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, he's been to a few, and it's it's an amazing time every time he tells me about it. So we're gonna go into our predictions about the NBA All Star Game, and let's kick it off with the NBA three point contest, where we have Malik Beasley, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Halliburton, Damian Lillard, Laurie Markkinen. Donovan Mitchell, Carl, Carl Anthony Towns, and Trey Young. So I'm just going to – whoever wants to go first, who you guys got? Some good options. Right, there it, are some good options. This is oh, a go deep ahead, field this year. It's a deep field. It is. So what, we have two former champions, one the reigning champion in Dame and then Cat. Yep. Everybody else hasn't won – Trey hasn't won one, right? No. Trey, you won one? Trey, Trey have you won one? The corner three, I did. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> only, if if all the racks, yeah, tr Trey Day would win every time if all of the racks were simply in the corners. I'm gonna put my money ball over there. Sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, got ball in the counter. I, you, know, you know, I have an I have an underdog pick that I have a weird feeling is gonna win this. Let's okay. go with the guy that plays for my new team. I'm gonna go with Jalen Brunson. I think yeah, Jalen Brunson's gonna gonna yeah he's gonna ride how hot of a player he's been in the first half of the season and win himself a three-point contest i'm gonna land with the guy in cleveland mm -hmm. this is for you it's the spider man spike. donovan mitchell's been playing great basketball lately he's number six in the nba right now in nba in three-point shots made which doesn't really translate to this because realistically this is just all wide open threes mm -hmm. which as basketball players would say that's the hardest shot to make because there's no one covering. Okay. Um, so I would say Donovan Mitchell, he's been playing great basketball and he's been pretty much taken over. I mean, the Cavs have won what? 23 out of 27. A lot of incredible. A lot of games. Trey, who you got? Ironically. So I actually did mine as who was going to be in the finals. The two people you picked as who I have in the finals. I have nice. Brunson beating Mitchell in the finals. Hey. high. Have is going part of reason why just hearing some of the OGs talk about like um, the the three point contest. One of the big things is who has an effortless shot because it takes a lot of your legs to take it to the finals. Brunson, he has a really effortless shot, so I think he'll still have the stamina late. Same kind of with Mitchell, but I think he'll have the stamina late. I think I wouldn't be shocked if Tyrese comes out actually like sets it on fire in the first part. And then it's too tired later. Like, I kind of think that's how yeah. it's going to go. And yeah. I don't know. I got a gut feeling 
Dame won last year. It's really hard for people to go back to back. I just don't think yeah. that's gonna happen. So and Cat, I know he's won before, but I don't know. I'm just not trusting him. I like his was a, fl- a fluke. <laughs> but he just yeah, gut yeah. feeling is yeah. I'm gonna go. Like I said, Brunson beats Mitchell in the finals. Jay, who you got? I, I have Brunson making the finals as well, but I have Trey Young winning this time. And the reason why Trey Young's been on absolute fire lately. Three. Guys, it doesn't matter where. Now, the only thing that might go against him is he might be shooting from too close. And he may need to take a step back when he gets to the middle. <laughs> round. But I think it's Trey Young's time for someone of his caliber who you would think a lot of the best shooters in the game normally get one. I think it's his time to get one. I think Brunson's going to be back next year and win one soon. But because I love what you said about him, that shot just looks like silk every time, as opposed to Tyrese's shot that looks like I don't know. That's a more some of the weird effort. effort yeah, Tyrese, so. Yep. Yeah. So I, I love I love Trey Young to finally get his first three point contest win at this All Star game. Okay. You know what's you know what's funny? It's kind of like the slam dunk was the premier event normally mm-hmm. at the All Star game, and I feel like now the three point contest because of how the NBA has changed. You could thank the you know, chef the NBA, for that. You know, the, the NBA has changed in the sense where it's more of a shooting league now, more than a big man slam dunk type of league, where, you know, maybe 20 years ago, I was looking forward to the slam dunk. I'd be like, all right, I'll watch the three-point. I don't really know who a lot of the guys are, but eh, I'll watch it. and eh, Whoever wins, wins. But I'm really interested in the, the slam dunk. So um, it's kind of funny how the three-point has kind of changed in that aspect. Um, but in really important – Who's going to win, Sabrina or Steph? Steph. Steph. Oh, Steph. I'm Steph and to, Michael you know, Jordan Curry. I respect, I respect Sabrina's yeah. game and who she is as a player, but this guy makes a thousand threes a week. <laughs> like in practice, a day sometimes. You really think so, on the national stage he's going to get showed up? Hell no. Like he is the greatest shooter in of basketball history. Why yeah. do I think? God, I wouldn't yeah. pick anybody in the world against him. There's no offense yeah. to Sabrina. I'm not saying anything against her talent. I just I, she could be some dudes. I wouldn't and, pick and Ray Allen. Sure. Just not that guy because right. nobody can be that guy is shooting. I wouldn't well, pick you know, Ray Allen. Jean thing where she was going against a retired player who used to shoot before. Like if she was going against Del Curry, then maybe Del Curry. I'm going to take her against Del Curry. Yeah. Go against Seth. Yeah. I'm going to take her against Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah saw I, wouldn't, a... I wouldn't take Steph again. I wouldn't take anyone against Steph at all, ever. Yeah. Like Ray Allen, um, the Reggie Miller, any of those guys. I yeah, wouldn't there's take nobody a... in the history of basketball. Yeah, he's just he's just so no. no, no, because he's not shooting threes consistently. I mean, that's there, you know. I was gonna say, like like Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete. If you if you the guy averaged forty it... points a game without a three point line. Yeah, but he was shooting from three, shooting from what his three point range. So he might average fifty. What? True. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I yeah, uh, I, mean, I agree with you guys. I, I I'm definitely gonna go Steph all the way. Yeah. So we're four for four on Steph here. But as we were talking about the dunk contest, we do have the dunk contest. Two G Leaguers, two NBA players. Let's get into it. We got Mac McClung, the reigning champion, coming back. And we have Jacob Toppin, brother of Obi Toppin. Mm-hmm. Jaime Jaquez of my Miami Heat, and then Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics. So who do you guys got? It's a tough one. I got I mean McClung. It's like did y'all watch last year? Have y'all seen that dude's YouTube was, tape? He that, still has so much stuff he didn't use last yeah. year that's just waiting in the clip. So it's definitely him. I get my big thing, and this kind of goes back to what you just said before about it switching over. Is I, I do want to give a shout out to Jalen Brown. I'm not saying he's gonna win. I'll give him a shout out because there aren't gonna be all stars who actually show up to dunk out there. Yeah. He has nothing really to gain from doing it. He's like, you know, I'm gonna go out here and do this. I wish more of the all stars would go in there. When people say that like the it's because the game changed, I don't think it's because the game changed which is why the three point contest has became more exciting. It's because the stars are willing to do that. If the stars went to the dunk contest, people would if yeah. if we had at the time John ja Morant, uh let's say let's say we keep this young. John ja Morant goes in with Anthony Edwards, uh-huh. Zion and that was like a dunk contest, that, that would be money and everybody would be into it. But because we're taking G Leaguers in there, yeah, I don't it, it can't be as big of an event. When we were watching the three point contest some years, we would have like Clay, Steph, Damian Lillard, like literally the entire field sometimes is actual yeah. guys who's an all star game. So I just don't get it. I don't I, I know in baseball why you don't do the home run derby. It throws off your swing. Sometimes you're swinging up too right. much. Like right. it throws it off. I just don't but understand the big why guys take part. But I don't 
not so much anymore. I mean, they are and they aren't. It's kind of like half and half. It's yeah. starting to fade away from that, too. But, I mean, I don't understand why the stars wouldn't want to because this it's is pride. your time. No, because it's about pride. People don't want to – nobody – it's just like real life. People don't want to take a hell. That's why you see – I hate to say this. Kids don't want to fight, stuff like that. And I'm not just trying to go encourage kids to go fight. Because why, like, instead of, like, a kid being like, I'm going to go fight, I'm going to go get a gun, I'm going to shoot this person. Because they don't want to take an L. So, and this goes back to, you know, as much as my GOAT, LeBron, I always call him bullshit on this because he didn't want to take that L because if he lost, the embarrassment wasn't worth it. So, it's easy for him not to have went out there, then lose and not check that box. Because back in the day, everybody did do it, whether it was Dominique, whether it was Jordan, Kobe whoever it did. And then LeBron set that tone. Like LeBron has set the tone of many, I think some for good, some for bad, but LeBron mm-hmm. is the reason the dunk contest failed because he didn't do it. And what did we always say? And Pat Bev told us back in the bubble, if Bron said, we going to hoop, we going to hoop. So when he said, yeah. we stars don't do dunk contest, stars stop saying stars we don't do the dunk contest. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron said that tone. I said, that's my guy, but I, I blame Bron for that. I was waiting for Anthony Edwards and John Moran to do it that one year. Because I would have thought that would have set the precedent moving forward. Like, oh shit, those two guys are doing it. They're the young guys. They're the young phenoms. They're they're the guys taking over for the LeBron and KDs. They're starting to take. Those are the guys that you the expect future. to be the future. So if they, those two would have done it, it would have been electric. I mean, when we saw the Aaron Gordon and uh, exactly. Was, exactly. Zach exactly. Levine, that was in a. Amazing dunk contest. It was just Best a great dunk contest yeah. in the history of dunk contest. And yeah, I, I was. Uh, it was. I mean, <laughs> go back and look at it. If you go back and look at no, it, go no, back no, and look at Michael. The theatrics were amazing. But the best dunk contest was Steve Franchise, Tracy McGrady, and, and Vince Carter going at it. Round for round where anybody could have won that dunk contest yeah. out of those three. And no, the I, theatrics were the same. The, the, Where's the last the, time the you were dunks that they did, I'm not saying the dunks that they did weren't superior, but that to me, and that's my preference, that was my favorite. And to me, that's the but, best. You know, in all seriousness, when is the last time you went back to actually watch that dunk contest? I'm I, not I saying it was bad. No, I, trust me, like, I, give, I give them full credit. Because I went back and rewatched last year. Like, I had people over, we watched the yeah. All-Star game, and we were like, we're going to watch. So we went back, watched that one. We watched uh, both of the Levine. and uh, We watched the Levine, the other Levine one. I went back, watched Jordan Dominique, and don't get me wrong, the fran- like franchise on them, that was a good one, but it, it that it was the level of creativity and all that was still a different level. Yeah. And yeah. uh and then remember too, it was. the other thing you got to going to like discredit. double overtime too. Yeah, so I'm getting yeah. to that. The yeah, thing you got not discredit with that is remember when they got the overtime, they were like, We're just making this shit up right now. Yeah. Which nobody ever read really the new dunk contest. Everybody had the script. The main screen dunk all... might be the most undermined dunk from way outside. I mean, he took off from way far. So I, I don't know why spot. people don't like, give that more credit. And he did, and remember, that. they were unplanned doing these dunks yeah. at a certain point in there. Yeah. yeah. They were just like, keep going to like, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to just do a windmill and throw it behind my back real quick. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I could probably do yeah. that. The other thing yeah. you don't want in the dunk contest that I've noticed in a few years, in some years, is some of the guys not taking it. I guess it's serious. I know it's supposed to be fun, but some of the guys are actually taking it. Like Mac McClung came in there, and we've known Mac McClung since he was 14, 15 yeah. years old doing yeah. these dunks. So we this is this was his stage. Mm-hmm. He took it as serious as he possibly could. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, he didn't get an NBA contract out of it. He's still in the G League, but I mean, good for him for setting the tone in G League to be like, all right, well, maybe we'll get some G League guys coming up. So. All right, so Trey, who do you have in the in the dunk contest again? McClung, easy. McClung, I'm gonna take Jalen Brown. I <laughs> I like to, yeah, I think he's gonna be come out with something crazy. Um, I don't I don't know. It's just I think it's the Celtics' year, unfortunately. Um, as a Heat fan, saying that I hate saying that, but I think it's their year, and I think this is his year to win the dunk contest. Who you got, Jay? I'm going with McClung. I'll take the defending champ. He's too creative. And like Trey said, we're going to see some new dunks we haven't seen yet. I don't think the other guys have that sort of creativity. And nor do I think they think about it as much as McClung. So I think McClung's the most prepared and he proves it. Mm-hmm. Mikey? Yeah, no, nah, I have to stick with Mac McClung. Like you said, like his natural skill set is meant for dunk contests. And we've known that, like you said, since he was 14, 15 years old. This is what he does. He's not like a pro. He's never been a prolific shooter or passer or dribbler or, you know, that physical Story guy. He's, just, he's a dunker. <laughs> dude, yeah. like, his natural skill set is like pickup game dunking. Yep. Like, he's been for this. Exactly. exactly. No, this is, yeah, this is what his, his whole career has led up to. 
is yep. when, when, Olympics. when they yeah. when, his Olympics. Correct. When he when they announced that he was going to be in it, I was like, he went in it. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. been preparing it since he was fourteen. Yep. And now he's a grown man and yeah, he got I was like, he got this. And yeah. I was I was thoroughly impressed last year with his dunks. But it's um I'm looking I'm conf- confused with Jaime Jaquez. I mean he has some powerful dunks, some creativity, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know, I don't see him as a dunker. I see him more as a shooter. So that, that's gonna be interesting for me. And then the uh Jacob Toppin. You know, I don't know much about him, but the Toppins well, just, the Toppins dunk. They dunk. He can fly. Yeah. He fly? Mm-hmm. I didn't even see him in college, boy. so did he go to college? He went to Dane, right? No, no Jacob. No, Obi Jacob went. went. He, no, he went to he went to Kentucky, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's let's keep it moving as we're talking about uh, stars and and celebrities. We got to talk about the celebrity game, of course. We of got course. the celebrity game where it's Stephen A. versus Club Shay Shay, Uncle Uncle Shay Shay. So we got on Club Shay Shay's team. Emil AA. I, I'm going to butcher all these names, Mike. I'm going to have you sure. read it. <laughs> uh, it. I don't even know how to say that first one. Kind of, let's just go to the next Anuel. one. Let's go to the next Kaisen, one. Kaisen, Kaisen and Will. And Will. Well, is it AA or double A? This, uh, I don't know how that goes, but I know okay. Anuel. Anuel. We got Anuel. Just keep it moving. Keep it moving. Kaisenet, Connor Daly, Walker Hayes, Quincy Isaiah. Jewel Lloyd, Micah Parsons, Lily Singh, Sir, and Dylan He's Wang. A, yeah, Sir is an R and B artist. Sir is okay. some smoke music, but uh, I don't and then, think- and then on, uh, on Stephen A, <laughs> yes. Team Stephen A, we have Meta World Peace, oh, Jack Ryan, CJ Stroud, Jean Marco, Jean Marco, Tim Barry. Adam Blackstone, Natasha Cloud, Jennifer Hudson, Tristan Jace, AJ McLean, and Kwame. Yeah, Kwame. That one. <laughs> oh, um, AJ McLean Jackson. from the Backstreet Boys. Nice. This is, I mean, this is closer than I think, but I'm going Team Stephen A on this. I mean, we got Meta, Jack Ryan, and CJ Stroud, and those two alone are going to take over the game. Um, but, Jay, what do you think? I heard Walker. I heard uh, uh, Connor Daly's a baller, so I don't know. I, 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 you have Meta World Peace on one side. I don't think he plays that much. I think he probably starts the game and then probably sits out most of it. Let's the uh, let the the non pass pro. At least, I've never seen like a pro pass NBA player on this list, so it's worth to see him up there. I thought uh, they were usually they co- usually make them coach. Yeah, they coach. Coaches, yeah. 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 Yeah, so I was kind of odd. So I don't think he plays that much. So I'll take, I'll go at Uncle Shea Shea's team. I I have to go with Team Stephen A simply because they have a former NBA player on the team. Even if he yeah. doesn't play that much, I feel like in a basketball game, pickup or not, he can probably like he might only play like five six minutes, but that he may he may score like twelve points. But I'm taking him because of CJ Stroud. And I hate that's, saying that's, it. Yeah. I don't know why. Stop. I got it. These Ohio State guys need to stop fucking going to things because I got to stop picking them. God damn it. Yeah, stop praising the Buckeyes. I, I, I'm praising them. It. Trace is get loving this. It. He's like, it's gonna be, get used to it. It's going to be a long season. Yeah, no. God. 20, guys, 20 guys going to oh, freaking yeah. NFL draft. All right, who you got, Trey Day? Uh, Stephen A. Smith's team, partly because, of, like we just said, I my gut says, CJ can actually ball a little bit. The athlete on the other side, Michael Parsons, is not the you know, no shade to Michael, but a lot of times them big stalky dudes like that, they're like shitty in basketball and all they do is like knock people over and just foul people hard and shit like that. I just feel like Michael's gonna be like as coordinated as he is in the NFL, yeah. my gut says the basketball version him probably can't dribble. They're gonna be just like pushing people. And he'll be like, Mike, this is not that is not foul. fucking Jalen Hurt stuff foul. This is foul. you're not <laughs> yeah, you're right. Just file like that is not Daniel Jones. Stop running after that man. He oh, is gonna, Michael, you have to dribble be? the ball. You don't just run with the ball. It's dribble. This is a football. Don't just take he's going to intimidate some traveling guys. It's all good. Traveling don't exist. Yes. You know he's going to intimidate someone though, because like they're going to be going for a wild playoff. He's he's just going to start <laughs> just throw the ball. Right. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Hudson going to just be startled in the middle of a, a jump shot. <laughs> 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 But yeah, the celebrity game I always look forward to. It's kind of like in the baseball. Like I enjoyed that 
part of the All Star yeah. game that I think it's fun, and especially when they've they've been creative, with it, right? And they've had uh, creativity with it. But one part of the All Star game, before we get to the All Star game MVP and who we're going to talk about, I want to go over to one particular part of the NBA All Star. Uh, if I can get to it, give me one second. So. The NBA All-Star, and Trey saw this, but they released a new court. I don't know if you guys can see the screen or not, but... That's dope. Yeah, the interactive court. Yeah, the interactive court they got going on. I really like this idea. This is going to be cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to... I don't know how they're going to play. But they've been saying that they wanna they wanna like kind of have this going forward, but I don't know how that's gonna work. But I think it's they're pretty sweet. A random star pops up and that becomes the four point play. Shoot from the yes. point, shoot from the glowing star. Four points. <laughs> I like I like it because it's interactive and it's, it's making it. Yeah, why not try doing it? You know, try it during the All Star game, not the NBA Finals of Game Seven, right? Like, yeah. That's yeah. Part of the interactive court too <laughs> is. It's supposed to be interactive, like even when they're on commercials. So they said they're gonna have like games on the floor for like the crowd That's to play interactively while That's we're really on commercial break. That's awesome. So That's like really yeah, awesome. for the fan experience, why not? And you know, it's all star. Try it there, maybe you know, see how it goes. The only thing that I know is gonna suck is they're about to just keep rolling more and more ads. The NBA is becoming NASCAR. You know it. Everybody looks like a damn billboard out here. Mm-hmm. Like, That's why I can see this rolling out in the in season tournament. Tournament. For sure. They're gonna yeah, release for sure. Sure. those courts they just did. Yeah, I can for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I, I do like the fact that, you know, one thing I like about Adam Silver is that he's trying. He's trying to be creative. He's trying to be with what's going on right now. And yeah. I think out of all the commissioners, we can always say that he's probably our favorite commissioner out Much of all. Better than because, Stern. Yeah. I mean, you know, realistically, we, we have, you know, in the NFL, he's trying to do global stuff. And I, and I get that, but I don't understand this. I don't understand going to Brazil and all that shit. We'll get to that later, but. Um, let's get to the NBA All Star Game. Yes. The, mo- the reason why we're here is we have the NBA All Star rosters. Who do we got as the MVP this year, Grandpa Jay? I mean, hard to go against the Joker, but I actually think it's going to be the Ant Man. I think when Kobe in Kobe's young days, when he decided I was going to try and take over a game, the ball's going to be in his hands at certain times. Uh, as good as Kawhi's playing right now, he's actually the reigning player of the week. And we know Luka is just an absolute criminal. I think Anthony Edwards kind of has a moment where he takes over this game. But at the same time, you know, you got Jason Tatum on the other side who never backs out of a challenge. So it's going to be tough. I think it's between the two of them and whether the West or East wins, I kind of have the West winning. So that's why I have Ant as my, as my uh, MVP. Trey said it because I also have Anthony Edwards too for the exact same reasons. Ultimately, I think he's going to come out here with a point to prove and say, mm-hmm. look, I'm better than you. Like going all the way back to when they did the the Olympics, uh, the FIBA, where he just was like, "All right, I'm the guy." They right, everybody said like they showed up, and eventually they were like, "Oh, he's the alpha in this damn locker room." Mm-hmm. I think he, similar to how Kobe was, is gonna go in and assert himself. People like Joker. A lot of times you saw last week, he didn't even really care about the All Star game. He's like, oh, I'm not really giving yeah. a damn about it. If not him, if not Ant Man, my second person would actually be SGA because I think he also can go yes. out there. Get a lot of assists, which will fill up the cup. He can score. He can get rebound. He is an MVP candidate. And the thing with SGA, he plays the OKC. They don't get a lot of TV games. I was happy this week that they just gave OKC a TV game because a lot of people, unless you got lead pass, like I watched him a lot on lead pass, but if you ain't got lead pass, you ain't seeing it. So this is the time where he can go out and put himself to the world. So mm-hmm. I would say in there was most likely, if not, SGA is going for the MVP. Yeah. This one was tough. I was between like three different people, right? I was between SGA. I was between Tyrese Halliburton and her dame. Um, I'm going to go LeBron. I think LeBron's going to get his MVP this year. I think he's going to show out that, you know, get his, you know, I don't know how many MVPs he has. I don't know if it's that many, but I think he's going to get an MVP this year. Mike? Yeah, I got to uh I got to roll. There was a few, there's a bunch of different good options here, but I got to roll with the leader of my fantasy basketball team, and that is the breakout star for the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. I think he is at home. (laughs) Exactly. The hometown kid. Like, I think he's got the skill set to be able to do a bunch of different things to help his team 
in in this game. I mean, they all. I mean, obviously, at the All Star level, it's they mm-hmm. all pretty much are, are good at almost everything. But it's just he's the new face. He's the new name as far as those those like guys that can get triple doubles in the league go. And I think he's going to take the opportunity to be playing at home on his court, you know, in his team's arena in front of what's going to be a good chunk of his fans. And he's going to feel that and it's going to influence his game and he'll be the MVP. Fact check, so you three, three, three uh, all-star game MVPs. Three so all-star. usually they try to force feed like the guy at home, which is why I get white with Halliburton. The yeah. reason I didn't pick him and I would have, in a lot of years because of the type of season he have, I would have picked him. But I've been listening to some of these guys' interviews from the past. And one thing they say is, if you are at home, you basically become the host of the All Star game. So a lot of people say by Sunday, the guy, especially if it's like only Drained. one All Star on the team, because you're not splitting duty. A lot of yeah. times, these guys, by the time the game happens, are like exhausted. Like I remember being in Cleveland and like hearing Darius Garland and uh, Jared Allen time being like, "I'm fucking tired." Because well, Addy's in the skill t- challenge, Addy's in the three point shooting, and he's in the skill so challenge, and he's yeah, in the three point, and yeah. he's going to be hosting parties, and then everybody's yeah. be hitting up, "Hey Tyrese, where's a good restaurant?" At? Yeah. Hey Tyrese, I need you to do a speak engagement. I need you yeah. to do this for your charity. Like, I, yeah. I just think yeah. he's going to be exhausted. So I like feel right. like next year I would probably end up picking him because I think next year he'll come in, he'll just get to relax and be tired. Yeah, it won't be right. It won't be his it's responsibility. Been, it, the the All Star game over the last couple of years has been more competitive. Mm-hmm. I will say it's been high scoring, right? But towards <coughs> third, fourth quarter, yeah, they start that. to, you know what I mean? So, all right, let's, uh, <laughs> the fuck let, we go. Let's pay homage to a great moment in All Star game history. We see Kobe oh. Bean Bryant right there <laughs> up in the lane, up in the zone, taking it over. We see Tracy McGrady, Carl Malone, some great names around him. Look at, look at the rare airified glide in the air right there. Big up to the man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say Jamie just left. He didn't like your pick, Mike. He just no man. Yeah, just yeah, want yeah, to pay our respects to Kobe on All Star. Screw this. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, like I don't. People say Jordan. I don't think nobody was as ferocious as Kobe during All Star weekend. Like that. That to him was it. Wasn't All Star game. It's like I'm gonna come out here and be the best okay. basketball player in the world. Single squad's got to get out to an All Star weekend. Trey, I've, well, heard sure. about, I've heard you tell us many or tell me many times about it's probably one of the fun weekends that you had you ever had. And it's just like a lot to do and a lot to, you know, explore and everything like that. Yeah, it's just so many different events that are going on. Like just fun events. I mean, you always like Jordan always has a big Jordan party. Nike has a bunch of parties. You have a lot of celebrity parties. It's it's just the whole city, wherever it's at, usually is just up and the energy is just like dope. And to be honest with you, for me, All-Star, I've never been to Super Bowls. I can't speak on that. But All-Star weekend to me is just more, I feel like, relaxed. And also, excuse my thing, viewers, but the Super Bowl, from what I hear, is a big ass sausage fest. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just right here about Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of high adrenaline dudes coming out, drinking beer, wanting to fight with all stars, a little more relaxed. You, you know, everybody's out there having a good time. The stakes aren't as high. We're just here to kick. Even the players are relaxed because they're just here to kick. You know? Well, if we do do it, it's going to have to be out in Trey's hometown, LA Host 2026, and it's going to be in San Fran in 2025. So it's on the West Coast for the next two years after this one. Hmm. Yeah, I think the last LA one too. The only thing with LA is the city so big that all the parties and events were so goddamn yeah. we in a car so much spread out for the yeah. year trying to do all those bits. Versus even like Chicago, which is big, but it still is more traditional. LA, yeah, you know, like being in Chicago around that time. Well, or if you are, Cleveland. well, if you are going to the All Star Game, enjoy it, have a great time. Heard Indianapolis is a fun city, and uh, you know, take some pictures. Tag us in it. All right, so going from the court to the ice, we're going to skate into our NHL topics. And one thing that's been populating over the last few weeks is I've been noticing a lot of players saying they're missing the physicality of NHL, especially one player, Ryan Reeves, who used to play for Mike's New York Rangers. I feel like he's played for a lot of teams in the NHL Mm -hmm. as one of the enforcers in the NHL, the last of them. So I want to to throw it over to Mr. Trey to see what his thoughts are on if – you like the physicality in hockey, or would you like to see more finesse? Like you like the speed, you like the the way the game is headed. Okay, so quick thing, story time. The year was nineteen ninety nine, and at the time there was a young Trey, and Nintendo sixty four was out. They had a game called NHL Breakaway. That was kind of why I just started to learn about hockey a little bit. But a little bit I do know about NHL hockey. Breakaway. At the time, you had people such as Brendan Shanahan and Steve Yzerman and Nicholas Lindstrom, and I remember playing with these physical. 
Detroit Red Wings team. They had all these highly rated guys. I'm like, I'm going to play with this team. They got these highly rated guys. And then I'm like fucking people up. I'm like, this is fun. This seems like <laughs> I'm just intimidating the hell out of the other team. And there was something to be said of that because with hockey, I look at it as this is the sport of intimidation. This is the sport where you have these real men. Where they, they may come out there with no tooth. They may lose a tooth and they just throw the shit in the crowd and just keep going, just keep skating like the shit and just go out. And that is the fun part. So I would say I missed that. But similar to my field of expertise in basketball, I'm always going to go for more skill. Don't get me wrong. It's cool to have the going position. But I said this back in basketball many times. People want to sit out here and say, but look at the mix of the A's. I'm like, they have to do can't check nobody. This ain't a, that's not basketball, just going out there and just beating people up. And the same thing we said for hockey. Yeah, y'all can say it's physical, but that's not hockey just to go beat somebody up. There's a certain point where you should have a certain skill of speed. You should be able to actually play actual defense, not just going to fuck somebody up, actually having a skill set. Anybody, if you teach me enough how to skate, I can get out there and fuck somebody up. That doesn't make me a good hockey player. That just makes me a fucking goon who can fuck people up. So, uh-huh. yeah, I do appreciate the level of skill that has been now asserted into the current hockey situation versus, let's say, the hockey situation of 25, 30 years ago. I'm not saying they weren't skilled then, but it's a different level when these guys can do it all and be monsters physically. Where these guys now, I think some of these dudes can go play other sports. I don't know if some of those guys in old hockey time, you can just say, well, I'm going to plug this big motherfucker and play somewhere else. Yeah, to that point, I mean, I – I always get it from people that they're like, the one part of hockey I like is the fights. And I get it. It's exciting. People like physicality, those type of things. But that's not hockey to me. As a, as a resident hockey player, I don't like that. I like, as as I was always the biggest guy on, our, on most of my teams, I was probably one of the less physical guys on my team. I tried to play a skillful game. I tried to do as much as I could skillfully and learn how to be a skilled player at my size. Now, I would hit sometimes. It's just part of the game when you get into that level. You have to hit. You have to learn to take it. You have to learn to, you know, it's just like in football. Take your angles and, and be strategic with your hitting because a lot of times people, when they're hit, when they're going to throw a hit, sometimes that hit is not necessary. Mm-hmm. You go throw yourself out of the play and you hit someone, and then all of a sudden they're going back three on one on your team when you could have been back there and said you wanted to lay the big hit. Mm-hmm. I know my dad's probably going to watch this and be like, he finally learned it at 31, but, right. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's the truth of it all. Like, when I see someone go out crazy, go try to hit someone, and then all of a sudden the team scores, it's like, okay, cool, you got that. But they got what, what it counts, right? So yeah. I love the skill part of the game. I love the way guys are just making it look so easy when it's not. Like Nikita Kucherov, I always make it the perfect example. He always just slows the game to himself. and But he's, he's actually moving really quick, but – he makes it look so freaking easy. And I love that part of the game. So I'm going to have to say skill. I love the skill part. Physicality is going to be there. But less than that, I'm going to agree with Trey on that. Grandpa Jay, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely with you guys. I was watching the Lightning game last night against the Bruins. And I think that's still some element of that brute to the game. Because you know that certain franchises that just don't like each other. It's the East rivalry has been going on for a while. Those teams have been representing the East in the, in the Stanley Cup for the past couple of years or so. So, you know, that's bad blood. And the bad blood does bring about this sense of the physicality of hockey. So you see it with certain teams that still have that, you know, you rub me the wrong way, I don't like you, plus they are conference rivals. So I kind of like that part of it because I like rivalries in sports. I think it brings out the best in people for a regular season game. You get a little bit more. Vasilevsky was amazing last night in the game. In fact, he shut the Bruins out in the penalty shootout, so the light went on to win that. But I love the finesse, too. I love seeing these guys fly around the ice. And for me, it was always hard to track the puck. Now it's a lot easier to track it. Guys skating at 100 miles an hour, you're like, that guy definitely has the puck because he won't just take off if he didn't have the puck and uh, just okay. start aimlessly heading towards the opposite side of the ice. So it's a little bit easier to track. I do wish that they would come up with something where you would be able to maybe track the puck a little bit easier at times, especially when they when they uh, <clears throat> flick it up in the air and you're like, shit, where'd that damn puck go? And all of a sudden you see it like trickle down on the ice and land. Most of the time it's they throw it over, you know, just to kind of reset, line change, whatever it is. It's going towards the opposite team's goalie. But I love the skill set. I mean, some of these guys skate so fast, it blows my mind that they can have that kind of control, especially with a board right there that's, uh, you know, five, six feet away, and you're still skating as fast as you can. And you just see them hit the bricks. Like, I love that shit. That makes me get real fired up. I'm like, damn, I wish I could skate like that. But, yeah, the, the skill set of these guys right now, it's unbelievable. 
you gotta love to see that the sports being coached in a different way too almost yeah. like the players have figured out how to play with each other and there's this give and go element and different things i don't know if it used to be like that before i think it was more of a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing and you know guys just kind of hang around the net and any loose pucks they'll try and like hit it into the net but it, it, it's fun now I, I think hockey's taking a big step forward they're on espn more i think more people in tampa love especially that. are loving the game there's not one person in tampa you don't see with lightning gear or stickers or something so the team here at least where i live has really embraced hockey and this town has, has really shown a lot of love for that team so that's kind of turned me on to the sport a little more as well hockey is a uh, hockey tampa is a hockey town yeah. a lot of people don't realize it but it really is yeah. they have the bucks and they have the rays but it's a hockey town. Mm -hmm. And to your point about the whole like following the puck, I remember a funny situation at uh we were at a male and I were at a Panthers game and there was this, you know, it looks like two couples sitting in front of us and we were sitting there talking, all of a sudden the lady like you know, jabbering with the you know, the one girl and she's just like, I can't follow the puck and in my head I'm thinking, Well, maybe if you shut your mouth and watch the game, you would be able to follow the puck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people would say that they can't follow the puck and I'm like yeah. Yeah, it's it's right there. I mean, it's it, I, maybe because I'm just used to watching, you know, seeing a move. But you know, I, I get it. It is hard to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you know, that was that was just a funny moment. I remember saying like, oh, "Shut up and watch the game. <laughs> You'll be able to see where the fuck is fucking going." All right, resident hockey guy, bring it home. Yes. So uh, call it obviously this is a my... three hour part of the episode. <laughs> yes, I thought I was the resident hockey guy. But he's the resident basketball guy. Yep. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Damn it. We switched to 2024. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we're both, we're both the new experts of ours. I will not be the new baseball guru at baseball. I'm going that, across y'all. the pond. Yes, John's going to be the soccer the expert. To go to Italy. Well, Italy is my favorite team and cover them. While Episode 99, <laughs> when single squad went to shit. <laughs> Everybody left their fucking leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so call it i guess you could call it like slightly biased because we all did grow up in a time when the game was at least changing if not changed uh as far as moving to that finesse and back in like the 80s and further back in nhl history and hockey history there was definitely a time and place when the enforcer as as they would call them the big guys uh had their roles on on the team and you knew those two or three guys when they stepped on the ice what they were there to do which was they're going to hit somebody they're going to get in the way they're going to you know be big bodies or they're going to fight like this is what they're here for like the the example i always use is obviously the great one Wayne Gretzky literally for a majority of his Oilers career had a guy named Dave Semenko on his line Dave Semenko's job protect Wayne Gretzky if anybody comes near Gretzky hit him if they try to fight Gretzky fight him so they, there were guys that had those roles, and that's how they made their living. That's what they did. These days, I think it's better for the game. I think it's benefited the game to have everybody of all sizes, whenever they hit the ice, they're a threat to score. They're a threat to move the puck. They're a threat to skate really fast and make plays because they all can, and I think that's great. I think that's how sports progress overall is, we, as we've talked about with every other sport, the guys get better. They get more athletic. They get more, you know, better understanding of how to use their bodies in a skillful way to be able to be better at their sports. And these days, you really don't have anybody in the NHL, AHL, KHL, anybody like that, that isn't a, at least a decent skater and it doesn't know how to do at least some stuff, has solid hands. They can pass the puck. They can shoot. And I love the idea that when I'm watching a game, whether it be a Ranger game or as my New York Rangers, or just watching a game in general, right? I love the idea that I can look around the ice and I don't know who's going to score. Mm. Anybody can. And I don't know when the puck comes off anybody's stick, it could go in. And I, I that's super exciting for me as a fan. Yeah. And, and Cal McCarr, who was, well, potentially could have won MVP of the league, multiple times yes has the hardest shot and is one of the most skillful defensive players in the league had right the hardest shot at 108 miles an hour Ooh. like yeah. <laughs> like I don't, they have the strength and the size but they're using it in different ways which is dangerous mm -hmm. and that's why they have lanch one that year because they were that dangerous so mm -hmm. yes yeah let us know what you think is it physicality or do you like skill in hockey let us know wildcat fans it's time to chill why do we always want to jump on a coach's back 
because things aren't going well in the regular season. Last time I checked, an NCAA, NCAA championship isn't won in January or February. It's won in March. And if you make a deep run, then you had a chance to win it in April. We've been without our starters for a couple weeks now. So obviously we're going to have a tough time playing against teams that are bringing it. And by the way, in case you haven't realized now as a Wildcat fan, every team wants to bring it to them. Come to SEC play because Kentucky has been the team to beat in the SEC. Oh, I don't know. Forever. So it's time to get off Calipari's back right now. Let these youngsters learn how to play with each other. Allow them some time to get healthy. Let's see how this starting lineup meshes together at the right time, which is towards the end of February going into March, when the true test really comes. And that's the SEC tournament and then March Madness. And then at that point, if we get bounced early, so be it. But for now, pump the damn brakes. Let these youngsters get some time on the floor together. And let's have some faith. Let's go, Wildcat Nation. All right, fellas, bringing it to back to the hardwood and to college basketball. Mm -hmm. It is heating yes, up, fellas. Every single night that I've been watching, I have the quad backs on because there's either an upset or it's just a great game. It doesn't matter if it's a power five or mid-major mm -hmm. schools. It's great college basketball. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's out there looking for something to do after football season, go watch college basketball right now. This mm -hmm. is the time that we want to. It is heating up. I'm very excited to see what the tournament's going to evolve into um, and what we're going to see in March. So I guess the question is, you know, with one month left, is there a clear cut number one? Or are we seeing like maybe multiple teams that are non-ranked make a run for a championship? Grandpa Jay? Well, I would say that the defending champ being holding the one spot kind of proves to us that they're ready to try and defend that title. So I think there's a definitive Dude, number one. But I don't so think good. there are any other definitive number ones after UConn. And like we've been saying yeah. on the show, it's going to be kind of like a process of who we just want to proclaim to be the next three best teams because it could be a shuffle between Houston or Kansas or Tennessee or even yeah. a South Carolina that might make a late season push and keep moving up the top 10 rankings. Or Marquette, if Marquette upsets UConn this weekend. They're fourth in the nation right now. Maybe they solidify themselves, but that's kind of the state of college basketball right now. I know I haven't mentioned Purdue, but Purdue seems all of a sudden to be a little bit soft against teams they shouldn't be soft yes. against. And, and that fear that. Of, of that softness coming out the wrong time in the tournament might see another early upset, which is why I can't say I don't know their definitive number one. Now, we saw last year that it doesn't matter what you're ranked. It really is who's ready to play on that night, probably more than any other tournament that we've seen. So I think UConn makes their deep run and wins that bracket. I can't tell you one other team right now where I can say definitively, yep, that team's going to win that bracket. The scary part about UConn is they're doing exactly what happened last year. Mm -hmm. is they did not look good in January. They did not look mm -hmm. good in December. And there was a couple games that you were like, eh, is this team going to repeat? They lost a lot of guys. They lost their star in Jordan. Um, what's his name? Jordan mm -hmm. Hawkins, who went to the mm -hmm. Pelicans. Um but, man, they have been just dominant. I think we're going to get a real test to see what this UConn team is made of mm -hmm. by playing Marquette this week. Shaka, I Shaka, think Shaka, 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 Shaka. I mean, Shaka just – I mean, I didn't even know – I knew Marquette was in top ten. I didn't know they were number four. Uh -huh. I was like, holy shit, they're four now. But uh -huh. I agree with you. Looking at Kansas, they got blown up by Texas Tech this past week. North Carolina losing to Syracuse. Come on, say it, Mike. Say it, say it. We lost to Syracuse. We yes, we did to lose to Syracuse. Well, I can't even gloat that much because North Carolina whooped our ass in their in their, yeah, exactly. in, their uh, in the Deep Dome. So, uh, but I mean, there's teams like that, like Syracuse, that are playing seven, eight losses right now, maybe even nine losses that could get in the tournament. And all you have to we've we've known this so many times. We said this about so many teams: Loyola, Chicago, George Mason, St. Joe's. Any of those teams, they get in the tournament. It's about getting hot. Mm -hmm. and when it's zero zero when you adopt and it goes into every scenario if you adopt the zero zero mentality and you go into that game you know yeah. with confidence you're going to execute games so i'm looking at like a mid major taking out one of the one seat all three of one seats this year taking all the mid majors taking out a one seat this year well, Jay Well even said recently the other night, he's like, he's not sure that he can proclaim the Big 12 as the best conference in America because you would have to prove that you have a team that could win the national championship. And he's like, all of them have so many holes right now. 
He doesn't know mm-hmm. if any of them are going to run their brackets either. Houston can't score the ball. Kansas now is thin at scoring because they have some key injuries late in this late in the season. Baylor doesn't seem to ever put together like any sort of a consistency. You know, bad loss here, and then all of a sudden they win two or three in a row. Yeah. So it, it, it's the point where it's like, well, you can't really do it as process of elimination. UConn's kind of sitting there with Marquette, and that's the one and four. You're like, well, well, they're strong. Why not take the Big East? But it, it's going to be a very interesting tournament for some teams where people are going to be like, I didn't realize they're a basketball program now. And then I think we'll start to see, like last year, brackets are going to look real shady by the second weekend. It's going to be hard to fill it out because there's going to be more double-digit loss teams Mm -hmm. than there ever has been in the tournament. Mm -hmm. But watch out for the Indiana State Sycamores. They are here to play. Broke into the top 25. Larry Bird is supported and all hyped up. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they they handle the pressure. Yeah. So, all right, clear cut. Do you think a number one is going to run the table, or do you think a Cinderella is going to upset Mike? Well, actually, Mike, we even hear we even heard your state. So. Yeah. On, so Mikey. let me see it, Mikey. Let me see it. Uh, the Owls may fly on <laughs> once again this year and have themselves a deep run, but I do think, as John has just. So eloquently pointed out, I think we've we are seeing shades of this year's FAU in the Indiana State Sycamores. I think they are they have shown their hand a bit as far as hey, just to let you all know, now we're in the top twenty five. We're on our way. Like, yep. do not sleep on us. We're beat. I think honestly, at this point, they're essentially knocking on the door of these rest of these top twenty five teams, going, hey, we're beating one of you this year. We don't know exactly. Like, we're gonna. We believe we can make a run, but best believe round of 32, one of you is getting beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at look at USF right now. I mean, right. We've been covering them all year. Um, you know, I haven't been able to get to many games, but, you know, Coach Raheem has that team playing well right now, 17-5, and 10-1 and one in conference play on a 10-game winning streak. And who do they have this weekend? The Owls of FAU at USF going to be a great game That's there in, in uh, Tampa, Florida. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the college basketball ranks figure figure themselves out. I mean, this year for the ACC, we may only see three teams get in the, in the, into the tournament. That's three. Wild. Three. Hey, I got I got a pony for you all that I, I, I told you all this. We haven't mentioned on the show, but we have spoke about it, John. Xavier Lee up there in Princeton. Plays yeah. on the Canadian national junior team, or had played on the junior team. He probably has a spot waiting for him on a senior team, depending on how good of a tournament run he has. True. This looks kind of reminiscent of Steph, but people are like, who? Who is this kid? Undersized, yeah. can shoot the hell out of the ball. They're going to win the Ivy League. They're going to be in the tournament. And this kid's going to rock some people during the tournament, and he will be a household name, I think, by the second weekend. Yeah, I could definitely see it. Princeton's always has been over the last three or four years been pretty yeah. dominant in the Ivy League, and then pretty much you know owned that league. Um, I think Cornell, maybe Colgate's been up there too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Colgate's in the in the Ivy. I don't think they are. I don't think but, so. Um, I think they're ECAC or something like something that. like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can see any of these teams making a good run in the next three weeks. I mean, we got three weeks, almost three weeks left. In the season, in the college basketball season. That's crazy. So there has been a change at number one for a little bit. Will Marquette knock them off? We'll see here this week. Let us know who your thoughts are in the comments. What you guys think? Um, will there be a Cinderella this year? Or will the top four be the top four who they are in the, in the tournament? So we'll see We'll see here in uh, in about a few weeks. Yeah. Cinderella, Cinderella. It is episode 98. We have two yes. episodes left until, or one episode left until episode 100. We already have a champion in Grandpa Jay. So let's throw it over to Grandpa Jay to intro us in into Stump, Stump, Squad. Ladies and gentlemen, favorite time of the show right here. You know what it is, Stump, the Squad. This is what we try and prove to you guys. We know everything in sports. We really do. You might think we're cheating, but... Maybe we are. Maybe we're not. If you want to play along with us, let's see if you get them right. You get it right, you get plus two. You get it wrong, you get minus two. Person with the most points at the end earned themselves a dub. These losers right here around me are trying to see who's going to finish in second. Because yours truly is the first official Stop the Squad champion. Now I've gone fishing, guys. So don't really judge me on how the last couple of shows have gone here. 
I don't really have no stakes anymore. But I have stakes with my three guys right here. Let's see who wins this week. I might just nab one because I feel like it this week. But Trey Day, take us away. It's NBA All-Star Weekend. I got a strong feeling you might have a question about that. Hey, guys, just so, you, just, just so you know, we're we're tallying the points off the last 10 episodes to start your ne- the next 25. And Jamie's in a hole right now at minus 24. So. Well, yeah, just make rules <laughs> up on the fly. Get out of here. That means I'm in the lead. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Trey. <laughs> no, so actually, I did not go to All Star Weekend. I know, contrary to belief, right? But after getting into some debate with some people about comeback player of the year, I started learning some random facts about NFL comeback player of the year. So okay. we're going to talk about that because that just happened. Shout out to Joe Flacco, the deserving NFL Flocka, comeback Flocka. player of the year. So there has been one time in NFL history where the comeback player of the year was split. Mm-hmm. What year did that happen? 1995, 2000, 2005, or 2010? 2010. John's going 2010. Suppose I'll stick with my birth year and say 1995. I know this would be different. Mike. I'll say 2005 because I have a feeling, I don't know why I think Cordell Stewart was around then. I don't know if I'm going to do it that. So I'll go 2005. Hmm. So today I have successfully stumped Mike and John. I guess Jamie found his way back. It was 2005. It was Steve Smith and Teddy Brewski actually mm, split the award right. that season. Trey, you were supposed to lie and just make it Say to one of the, the ones we actually, said. <laughs> it's actually not. Actually, Steve Smith was perfectly healthy in 2004. We're taking away his comeback player. Of the year. <laughs> Why did he win comeback player of the year then? He was injured. I remember, he was injured. He remember he was injured. Oh, that is the yeah. I remember he kept blowing shit out early. Then remember, I think he blew later out in he the Super Bowl. Bowl. No, that was a no. It wasn't Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. It was a Super Bowl, but he had a few devastating injuries early, mm-hmm. which is why yeah. it was good to see yeah. him have such a great late career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, um, it's cool, Jamie. Off, you're going next. All right. Well, I am sticking to. El basketball, and my question is: Can you guys tell me who currently leads the NBA in the most thirty-point games so far this season? Is it Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Luka Doncic, or Shea Gilchrist Alexander? Luka Doncic. <laughs> yeah, I think it's SGA. Uh, I think it's Joel. So we're locking it in. So we have Trey and Mike with SGA and John with Mr. Embiid. Yes. Gentlemen, I have successfully stumped John. It is my guy from Kentucky who has 39 30 point games after Jeez. his 32 point second half performance last night. Well, the only reason I went L Embiid because I know we went on that crazy streak of having. Double figures, but I think some of them were in the twenties. I think, right? Yeah, but he's missed. Yeah. We got yeah, he's, he's, missed missed, he's, missed, he's missed a lot. He's, he's missed. He's off, he he's does off the uh, MVP ballot now because they know they're going to miss more than seventeen games. So he's, oh, yeah, off. he's out for until yeah, pretty much the rest of the year. He, yeah. He's um he does score thirty when he plays. He hasn't played enough to be he's, yeah. in that right. Yeah, SGA really right. Is always, SGA's healthy always. Mm-hmm. But he has All his right. MVP, so I don't think he. All right, John. Who's going to go around the around the horn here? You next. All right, I'm next. Around the world, around the world. Whoa. In 2010, the the largest crowd for an NBA All-Star game was held at AT AT&T Stadium in Jerry's World. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people were there? A lot. And and Jamie is wrong. (laughs) (laughs) There was only two. There was only three people there. No. (laughs) Uh, 105k, 108k, 110k, or 90k. Hmm. So 108, 105, 108, 110, and 90. Those are our options. Yeah. 108. I was thinking 108. I always seem to take. Uh, I'll just wait 105 since y'all chose 108. I'll take 105. Trey, you chose 108? Yeah, I'm going to take 108. Go with my first mind. Well, gentlemen, I have successfully stumped 
Death Squad. Jamie, it is 108,513. All right, so we came back. High five. So, yeah, put Jamie out of here. <laughs> we tied. What y'all talking about? No, uh, Trey's at four. Mike's at four. No, Mike's at two. Mm-hmm. So, Mike. Yes. Mike's at two. Trey's at four. I'm at minus four. And Grandpa J and myself are eliminated in heat because he's at zero. So, Mike, is your turn in Trey? I'm not eliminated. To get it right. If I get it right and Trey gets it wrong, me, Trey, and Mikey tie. You're eliminated. You're eliminated. We said <laughs> you're eliminated, so you're eliminated. All right. You're let's eliminated. get on with it. Ask your damn question, Mikey. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Jeez, aggressive. This, this question is tailored, obviously, Jeez. specifically oh, to Jamie and Trey. I, I bring you an NHL question. Oh, lovely. Oh, of course. My wheelhouse. Yes. I see recently, what you did there. Yes. Recently, Detroit. we had uh, we had Maple Leafs defenseman Morgan Riley get suspended for five games for essentially punching someone in the face mm-hmm. with their stick. So, I ask you, what NHL player holds the record for most times suspended in NHL history? So, not length of suspension, the number of times they've been suspended. Draymond Green. Oh, sorry. If he played NHL. hockey, yes. <laughs> However, <laughs> Rashid the Iceman sure. Wallace. If All right, playing hockey, yes. Yes. <laughs> and don't even get me started on Ron Artest. <laughs> All right. Uh, A, Brad Marchand. B, Chris Pronger. C, Chris Simon. Or D, Todd Bertuzzi. God, those are great. I'm ones. going Todd Bertuzzi. Yeah, that's that's tough. Who is B? Says Todd Bertuzzi. Who is B, B was Mike? Chris Pronger. Yeah, give me Pronger. Pronger seems like a okay. Fun names. Fun I'm names. But Simon, that. but Simon did get this. Oh, fuck. Even Marchand, though Marshall, was, I, I, Marchand, I think it's A, but I think it would be. It's between. I think it's between Bertuzzi and Marchand. I think it's Marchand. That's what I thought originally too. But we will just go. He's been suspended a lot because mm-hmm. <laughs> Marchand. Okay, so John, you're saying Marchand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trey is saying Bertuzzi. Mm-hmm. And Jamie's saying Pronger. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gentlemen, I have successfully stumped Jamie and Trey. It is Brad Marchand. Which means you and Trey tie? Yes, which means Trey yep, and I tie. We go to All a tiebreak. Right. I got a tiebreak question. I got, you got it or I got it? I got a tiebreak question. Go ahead. I got a tiebreaker question too. <laughs> All right. You want to ask it, John, or you want me to ask it? So the Eastern Conference has how many wins in the NBA All Star Game? Oh God! Just, Close to uh, the number of wins. East total in hit in the history of the All Star Game. Hmm. I'm gonna go with. 32. Trey says 32. How do I prices right him? <laughs> I'm going to go with 35. And I would have guessed oh. 37. I also oh. thought 37. Oh, no. Well, everyone. You, oh, no. You said, you said 35, right, Mike? I did. Well, if Grandpa Jay was actually playing, he would have got it right because it's 37 on the nose, which means Mike is episode 98 <laughs> champion Woo! of Cinco Squad, bringing the total scores to Jamie with 11, Mike with 7, Trey with 5, John with 4. Okay, I'm not going to win anymore. I'm going to bomb next week on purpose. I, no, I know. He's just yeah. not going to show up. I'm just not going to show up. <laughs> You can't you like lose Daniels, if you don't play. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be with graphics. <laughs> Actually, you, could, you you don't have to come. Just help me with graphics as one yeah, of the morning. Yeah. No, I'll sleep while you guys are recording the show, and then John, just call me to wake me up, and I'll get up and do the graphics. Well, Mike is episode 98, Stump Squad champion. 
We have one more episode until we get to 100. Yes. I'm excited. Episode 100, guys. That's crazy. I know. It's, it's yeah. crazy. It's Damn, insane. Start March. Start March with episode 100. Let's fucking go. That's going to be Let's great. Let's do it. Hats off to you Woo! guys. Hats off to my mother-in-law. I did it on uh, Super Bowl Sunday on our live show. She bought me this amazing yes. Cinco Squad hat. That is sweet. Um, it's really sweet. I really appreciate it. You know, my wife and all her family and my family for supporting us as much as they do um, and all of your families as well. Yes. But I also want to give a shout out to everyone that participated on Sunday, mm-hmm. Super Bowl Sunday, all of our guests, Hennessy, Vinny, Shane, Dave, Dave, Dave D- location Dave, I'm called. <laughs> Come <laughs> hell or high water, Dave participated. <laughs> Idris coming on. It was a fun show, fun two hours. It went by like that. It, it really did. Really it was did. Fun. Um, we're going to definitely have those guys back on the show here very soon. Um, we're really excited for, you know, the off season, I guess, for NFL. Got the combine in two weeks. We got college basketball heating up here. Um, looking forward to a great end of that season. But make sure you guys, any final thoughts heading into All-Star Weekend? Football, I miss you already. Uh, I would say that. Or Mikey, over the seat, though. Get it back in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, combine. but it's not the really same. But it's not the same. It's never yeah, honestly, over. That, that, they, two wow. weeks prior, two weeks after the Super Bowl, they have uh, the com- they have the, the the combine. So it's really once not again, <laughs> white men can jump will be the headliner of NBA All Star. <laughs> I can too. I can't. There, I just jumped. Oh, yeah, I can jump. I just can't jump very high. I believe I can fly. I don't. My, my fear if I jump now, I might hurt. I might like pull something or turn ah. something. <laughs> Madeline asked me the other day when we were playing basketball, she's like, can you, uh, you can grab the rim. I'm like, yeah, I can grab that. I'm going to go, go up. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> 31 hit me right no, in the no, face. No, no, no. no, no, no. So, well, make sure you guys tune into our socials. We'll be live here all weekend for NBA All-Star Weekend uh, with clips and everything. We appreciate mm-hmm. the support. Um, make sure you tune in next week, episode 99 of Single Squad. We'll see you guys here next week. Single Squad out. Mm-hmm.